Today is September 21, 2014, 23 years of Armenian independence, and it is also CivilNet's third birthday. My guest in the studio now is Sona Ayvazian. She is the Deputy Director of Transparency International Anti-Corruption Center here in Yerevan. Sona, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting. Um, as I said, we are celebrating the 23rd anniversary of Armenia's independence. Uh, after almost 800 years of loss of statehood, uh, it is the third republic. We had 1918 to 1920, the first Armenian Republic, Soviet Armenia, and then in 1991, we finally gained independence. Um, it started with the Gharapagh movement in 1988, where hundreds of thousands of people in Armenia and Gharapagh were demanding the reunification of Gharapagh with Armenia. Um, then it was the collapse of the Soviet Union, and finally, declaration of independence, and then the referendum on September 21. Uh, at that time, uh, you were a young woman living in Yerevan. I'm sure you were part of that. I don't know if there were any Armenians that weren't a part of it. If not physically, then uh, they were there through their spirit and intellectually in every other way. What was it like back then? What were the feelings? What were the hopes, the aspirations? My memories are very positive, of course, because I was young and the mood of the people during those times was completely different from now. Uh, that was a national revival. Uh, we, were, we had expectations. We anticipated something new, uh, uncertain, but something optimistic. We were understanding that we are, may, we are living in some historical moment and um, wanted to make our own uh, work, our own participation in that um, building of a new uh, nation, new society. Uh, I don't remember the exact date of independence for some reason, uh, but, the, but I remember those weeks and days uh, and months of uh, enthusiastic feelings. Um, we were just expecting something very colorful, bright, mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's again, it's associated with the young year, years of youth, of course. Uh, unfortunately, not all Armenians were living with that life. I should say that, um, like today, when we see that uh, only a minority of people is actually participating and is active uh, during uh, this 1988 and 1990s, also there were uh, there was a minority who was active, and there were consumers who were. Yes, they were engaged in um, discussing, uh, learning new things, but they were not very active. So it's pretty similar that mm -hmm. you always have a minority of people who are uh, actually uh, engaging and actually are um, taking part in all these processes. Yeah, they could be the game changers as, as they were. Definitely. Um, so now you work for Transparency International Anti-Corruption Center. Uh, your work is not an easy one, what you do. You have to deal with all of the, the challenges that the young Republic uh, of Armenia faces. So someone who was part of that movement, someone who witnessed those historic moments uh, and then lived through some very, very difficult years uh, with the war, with uh, the energy crisis, with the blockade, um, those cold and dark years, as we say in Armenian. Uh, and the political upheavals. Um, today, 23 years later, are you still, does that hope carry you through? Now, even now? Um, it's different, the feelings are different and very contradictory, uh, but there is a hope, of course. Uh, I'm not the one who says that everything is done with this country and the country doesn't have a future. No, I don't think so. And I think it, the country has a future and we are responsible people who has to develop that future. Uh, I think that when we got independence, it was a historical moment. It was um, a matter of circumstances to some extent. And we uh, took this independence for granted. And even though more than 99% of people voted yes, uh, I don't think they all understood what is independence, what would mean it for, for Armenia. And I don't think anyone understood because it was, things were changing, the Soviet Union collapsed, nobody would envision uh, envisage uh, what is going to happen within a few years. We didn't have um, 
war as such mm -hmm. yet. It, we had instability on the borders and in Karabakh, and we had Sungait, we had earthquake, but we didn't have the war. We didn't have these uh, years of disappointment, of um, economic collapse, and uh, we didn't really imagine what would happen. So that's why that's one of the reasons that we were so enthusiastic and hopeful uh, when we were going to say yes. But still, it was a right decision. But I think that because we took it for granted, because the war took uh, so much attention from us, and after the war, things kind of changed, and everyday economic and social problems that we were being faced um, kind of ma made us um, uh, go far from this idea, mm. concept of independence. We didn't realize what we have. And uh, I think during these last years, when we started uh, losing some, uh, in some um, parts of independence step by step, we started realizing that, okay, we had this and we are not able to sustain it. And um, that's my feeling as well, that I kind of um, reassessed, reevaluated this concept uh, during these last years, and especially last year when we had this sudden uh, shift in foreign shift policy. Shift in yeah. foreign policy, yes, and uh, aut autocratic decision making mm -hmm. and um, one man decision making basically, and uh, losing our sovereignty in the area of customs policy, in the area of energy policy. Uh, so we are step by step kind of becoming a part of. Uh, um, Russia, or I hope it will not happen mm -hmm. uh, ever, but still the process that the, uh, our uh, government is taking us today is not, um, it's very kind of diverging from the mm -hmm. uh, independence the concept. concept. Right. And we are betraying the concept of independence. We just didn't, we, we underestimated this concept. We relaxed and we didn't mm -hmm. um, maintain it. Uh, we didn't um, cherish it as we should have done probably and it's uh, it's today's uh, people today's generations responsibility to bring things back if, if to, the, to the extent possible and um, re rebuild reestablish the sovereignty that we had at least a few years mm -hmm. ago so I certainly don't expect you to have any kind of magic solutions about how we build up that confidence and that knowledge and that value of statehood uh, you mentioned the new generation that we oftentimes call the independence generation, that generation today that was born in the early part of the 90s who grew up with Armenia. For them, Armenia was always independent. What is, what is, it? is, it, is it education? Is it the fact that we, did, we haven't had statehood for centuries, that we don't know how to govern ourselves? What is going to be that key that one moment in history that's going to change the paradigm, that's somehow going to make us wake up and understand that this is what we have, these recognized borders of the Republic of Armenia, and we have nagorno karabakh who after, after a four-year war was able to, do, you know, uh, to survive. What is, it that, what is it going to take for us to be able to start changing the mindset? Um, I don't think with the, the mindset, um so we are changing it uh, every day, step by step, and a lot of people and a lot of organizations are engaged in changing the mindset. But it doesn't happen very quickly. It, it deteriorates very quickly, but it's difficult to uh, regain the values uh, wh which we have lost for many years. Uh, but for the change, I think the uh, most useful and most effective step would be just holding uh, true, genuine, free and fair elections. Mm. If elections happen in this country, if we really are able to elect a government and then demand from the government, uh, make the government accountable, uh, things will change very quickly. And the good thing about Armenia is that um, because it's a small country, I really hope that it will be very uh, not very easy, but it will be possible. pretty easy and possible to uh, re-establish these values and re-establish the structures, the um, institutions, the trust of people in the government. But what we need is to change the government at this moment because mm -hmm. we do not, we can't make any change with with um, government that has usurped the power. Mm -hmm. Basically, has captured the state and. Uh, 
we cannot hope we cannot have any hope with this government. So our first task and a task for each active citizen and the citizen who is caring about this country should be um, getting rid of the uh, power that has usurped the, the, usurped the authority, usurped the power. Well, Sona, uh, on that note, uh, on a message to all of us and to all the citizens of Armenia, I want to wish you a happy Independence Day yes, as well. Yes, and I, wish, uh, I want to wish uh, civil net audience uh, as well happy Independence Day and also I want to congratulate, congratulate civil net uh, on its birthday uh, and uh, I think civil net did a, and does a good job in um, making public uh, a lot of uh, events uh, and a lot of uh, processes a lot of ideas that would otherwise be um, not not hidden, but uh, still it does, it kind of uh, felt some niche within the uh, media uh, environment and uh, I, I wish you could to continue uh, doing your work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sona. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Sona Ivazian. She's the Deputy Director of Transparency International Anti-Corruption Center here in Yerevan.